we're going to chat about what's different about a community run by ADHD coaches. Colleen, what is different about a community run by ADHD coaches? Well, they get to look at our faces. So you can decide for yourself whether that's a benefit or, or a drawback. <laughs> um, yeah, um, ADHD coaches, because our day-to-day -day lives are living and working with, with trying to facilitate the understanding of the ADHD brain, it's something we can't turn off. So when we're constructing and maintaining a community, um, that will always come through. We will always be thinking unconsciously and consciously about the aspects of ADHD and and things like um, the way the Discord is even set up and and the the um, the channels that are involved, the channels that are not involved. And, uh, and pruning and, and maintaining those over time will, will just organically be um, seen through an ADHD and improvement lens that somebody who has ADHD, uh, not only, but, but would have lesser uh, contact with different people's experience because we have a contact with people's experiences of ADHD, not just our own lots of people's and not yes. casual conversations kind of intimate ones on people's lives yes and, and what see... works and what does not work <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i've said to my dad before and this may sound weird but my dad was a doctor before he retired and and he was like yeah well you're all, i'm always telling people to exercise they never do and i was like yeah that's because telling somebody to exercise does not magically make it happen Literally, my job is to help someone find a system that will work for them to help them build the habit of exercising, because it is not just a thing you do all of a sudden. And and so being the being those people who have seen the things that are working or the things that are not working um, could be like, hey, yeah, so I know a group of people that like this works for them or that works for them. And and having having access to that. And so, um, you know, it, it has happened before where somebody had a, a, an aggressive number of items in a daily to-do list. And you know, I dropped them a private message and said, hey, it's okay if you want to, like, if this is the choice you're making, but some folks get overwhelmed and, and have a hard time knowing where to start. And so if your list, if you want your daily list to be the possible items I could draw from, that is a very different mindset from, I this have to is, do these all two days. And I will feel like a failure if I haven't done them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it turns out that this person was doing the, I want the complete list, which is fine, but I could touch in and say, Hey, is this, is this list realistic for today? Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to have only the things you can do today on your list? Or do you want like the complete list of possible, not all of and it's possible, being, potential, potential tasks. <laughs> Being asked that question is not something that somebody would necessarily think of if they do not have the experience and training of an ADHD coach. When people are talking about situations and experiences and challenges in Discord, um, they're more likely to get a response from a, a community leader who, who is an ADHD coach, right? So, so that accessibility hopefully is beneficial to people, um, even if they didn't be like, hey, you guys, what do you think of this? They're just posting about it. And we're like, oh, I had a thought on that. Because again, it's unconscious. You definitely want somebody who's managing their own ADHD. I am combined, which means that I very easily could go, oh, I just came up with an idea for a channel and now there's 1,100 channels. <laughs> um, but I've been a member of Discords where they had 11 million channels and it was just overwhelming. And yep. so when, when I come up with one, like I think about it, I wait and I bring it up with Colleen mm -hmm. and then I check with her. And it's like, if it's made that many <laughs> steps, it means it's one I really probably want. And so it's been filtered even before I bring it to Colleen. Mm -hmm. And then we've had a few that are like, you know, nobody's used this one in six months. Let's, yep. let's talk. Yep. And because we want to make sure that it's like easy to engage with. And of course, we always want to hear from somebody if it's not for any reason, mm -hmm. because how do we know? I mean, we, we can make guesses based on what we've seen with other people, but we can't always know what's confusing. Yep. Um, 
And that is but definitely also, an element, I think, of being an ADHD coach because um, I often use the word iterative or having versions when experimentation, when I'm working with a client, it's not, okay, do this thing. I am not a, I'm not a, uh, a Brittany and I have said, um, a strategy vending machine. You don't just put in your quarter and get out a strategy. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a collaboration, but moreover, it's about what is it that I'm doing this week? How have I changed it from last week? What am I going to do the week after to improve it? And so thinking, okay, that chat, that, that channel has not been used in six months and pruning it, you know, and, and especially if, you know, maybe there was there was some kind of like, oh, but I had such high hope for that channel. Oh, well, you know, we we're managing our own rejection sensitivity and we're, <laughs> we're moving forward with the new iteration. And maybe it'll come back and maybe someone will be like, oh, hey, I really want X. And we'll be like, hey, we can resurrect that. Um, but uh, but in the meantime, it's right now, what is this version and how is it going to work best? Yeah. Speaking of rejection sensitivity, is that something that we have some awareness of as ADHD coaches? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would like to think we do. Um, and, and while it's not possible, yeah, well, it's not possible to give feedback without incurring any rejection sensitivity, we do try to be really mindful of it when we do like, oh, hey, I wasn't sure if you knew, but your microphone is hot and and on well, and you probably didn't know it during co-working or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And we do try to be uh, sensitive to that. Yes. But, but we also know we can't be 100% because yes, that hurts yep. sometimes. <laughs> it does. I, I have a distinct memory. I can't remember what the issue was, but I have a distinct memory of in, in, a, in a meeting between the two of us, we worked for like a solid 30 minutes on the wording of something that we were going to bring to a member to in, improve everybody's experience of it. And uh, yeah, that was hard, but it, but it was definitely relying on our awareness of and our experience with personal and, you know, client experienced ADHD, uh, rejection sensitivity uh, in order to, in order to minimize the, uh, the impact that this message would have on the member. But also that we had to have awareness of how that uh, the the actions of that one person were impacting other members. Yes. Um, yeah. Either by report or just observation. Yes. <laughs> or potential. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, guessing. And I, I think that there was an element of. Yeah. In that instance, I'm pretty sure there was an element of what was going on with that particular person was probably ironically causing RSD and other members we didn't yeah. know for a fact we were thinking because of certain things that we again you know have heard um yeah yeah it was it was tricky and i believe it was resolved as if i remember correctly it was, it was resolved fairly well yeah yeah, yeah i think so yeah. um go us <laughs> another thing that is a little bit of a side to just the leaders of the guild um uh, being ADHD coaches, but also potentially being your ADHD coach, either in group coaching with the journeyman or in one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, and we've had clients who are both, um, is, is that sort of follow on. So if somebody has things in the daily tasks and I can see that, that they're doing them, then when we come to either our one-on-one -on -one meeting or the journeyman meeting, like I can make a comment on that. I can say, Hey, so-and-so, I can see how hard you've been working on this. You've been posting it regularly. You've been crossing things off. I can see that you're making progress. Um, or also I could say like, wow, that one's been nagging at you for a long time. Is it possible to drop it? Because mm -hmm. they can see it on a more everyday basis. And something like that doesn't always come up in the mm -hmm. once a week coaching of like, hey, let's touch base on your goals um, that you're actively bringing to coaching. Mm -hmm. um, it's more that sort of day-to-day -day touch point mm -hmm. where we can see like, hey, I haven't seen you on there in a while. Is something going on? Mm -hmm. Whereas if I don't have that access to somebody, I can't ask about it in a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very nice. It's, it's, it's more integrated. It's, it's more points of contact and, and having, and, and very, very probably in, in our opinion, uh, making faster progress as a result because you just have, but, uh, but hopefully without it being overwhelming, because like, if you're, I had, uh, I, I had a, a meeting with, uh, I believe, as far as I know, the, the closest physical distance to me, ADHD coach, 
um, just to you know touch base as colleagues. And uh, she has a package that is ten thousand dollars a year, Canadian, uh, and that's every day uh, access to her. And I was kind of mind blown by her commitment to that. I don't know how many people ever bought that package, but I was just like, wow, that that is quite that is quite intensive. And for me, even as a client, I would find that overwhelming. I would I would find it that I I wouldn't be making progress that would be needed for coaching. That's just me, right? There are other people who do other things. But in terms of this, I I find that it'd be more likely that more folks would benefit from the points of contact that we have here uh, without it being overwhelming uh, yeah, every single day. Yeah, because it's it's not like we're saying like, yeah, did you do the thing? Yeah. It's, it's more, oh, I've noticed this thing and I can yes. bring that strategically right because we know if we were to say that every single day or, or multiple times or whatever we we have a a, a a finer tuned sense of of what might be um appropriate and, and useful for that individual as we get to know them in the group but we don't do the reverse which is important to note unless somebody has stated a goal like in the journeyman group i'm not going to ask them in the public forum how's that coaching goal that just that person and i talked about in our one-on-one yes. -on -one coaching yes yeah, um, the uh, the privacy still still holds true, but I know to extra cheer them on if they share that victory voluntarily in the group. Yes, and, yeah. and sometimes sometimes I'm sure Colleen could tell because she knows me really well. Like that must have been something they brought up in coaching because she's awful excited. But at that point, there's no confidentiality, right? Because the person just said it in the group. And folks have used things that they can post to the group as a coaching item. If they want the accountability, I may say like, is that something for daily tasks or is that something to bring mm -hmm. to coworking? Because I have a better idea of what resources they have access to than a yes. client that doesn't have access to the resources in the guild. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get into the the area with with a client who is, is not in the guild, where it's like, okay, have I given you the spiel about co working before, right. or like, have I sent you the resources, or like, what what is your relationship with that? And having that conversation, and of course, <laughs> my memory has always been bad, and it's even worse when I'm sleep deprived, and uh, so it's like, okay, really, have I? And what did I say? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's beneficial. <laughs> But, but sometimes like, and one of the reasons that we form the guild is, is a little bit in our coaching sessions when somebody's like, I have nobody I can ask to work with me. Yeah. And it was just a task that really needed handholding. And, and at that point, the options are to keep trying it on their own or to use the coaching time. And that's pretty expensive time. Yeah. Um, and if there is another option like co-working, that is going to be a better payoff. Now, if you need more handholding than somebody else passively being on the same channel, then yeah, coaching is the right place to bring that. Yeah, um, and, and there's different different things for different like, like like some tasks might be just okay. I posted in the text chat. Some some tasks might be I gotta schedule a body doubling and make sure I'm on video and and maybe even ask somebody like, can you please schedule yourself too? And uh, or then it's like the next level of okay, I seriously need my coach. And the coaching time and, and the and the um, the weight of that, right? Because it is expensive, but it might uh, it might be a situation of needing that understanding of okay, you're here to do this thing because this is expensive time to get it done. I think that's about it. We hope yeah. that we are bringing something unique as ADHD coaches to our community, and we are just loving watching it grow and watching our people support each other. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you. So do you look frozen to you? Yes, I think it's my camera. <laughs>